Okay, straight to business. You know, the specter of banditry and uh, crippling insecurity that accelerate, you know, in various parts of Nigeria greatly, demean, it, 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 it greatly diminishes us. But report it, we must. Now, reports reaching out say in three separate attacks in the Kanoma district of Maru local government area of the Zamfara state, bandits wantonly killed 25 persons, including a prominent vigilant uh, leader identified as Dahiru Dagamji. Uh, available information have it that the leader and his lieutenants were trailed, you know, for a while and then attacked an enraged armed community in the environment has gone on the trail of the bandits. Now, time to call the bluff of bandits, don't you think, Jide? Yes. It is painful when those who put their lives on the line to protect our people, to protect our communities, um, get killed in this manner. The truth of the matter is we do not have military presence, police presence in all of our communities. And the bandits thrive in these ungoverned spaces. Yeah. Bandits thrive in rural communities. Criminal headsmen who are killing people in Plateau and other places thrive in areas that have little or no police Security presence. presence yeah. So they do not want to be resisted while carrying out their activities. They just want to kill our people, steal their cattle, steal farm produce, and go away on challenge. This is the kind of life that these uh, bandits and the um, uh, criminal headsmen favor. Now, to make up for lack of presence of security operatives everywhere that they are desirable, states are forming vigilantes or vigilance groups. Um, communities are forming vigilance groups to confront this good for nothing people. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the reports that we've been getting in the last one, two months show clearly that these vigilant groups are no match to these fellows. These fellows are sufficiently armed. There is a big arm struggle within the bandit leadership okay. in the Northwest. The more weapons at your disposal, the greater your greatness. Yes, your, the, great, the, the, the greater your influence over fellow bandits. Fellow bandits will respect you and not encroach on your area of influence once they discover, once they, they have that knowledge of your capacity in terms of your weapons. So they spear. They do not spare money at all. They spend money on getting these weapons. And I've said it before, we have extensive border with Niger Republic spanning between six to seven states. Yeah. And this land border with Niger Republic is more than 750 kilometers in our country. From the northwest from Jigawa in the northwest, right up to the northeast, Yobe in the northeast. Extensive borders. So, and these border, uh, borders are not, they are not well policed. A lot of them are not even, uh, they, are, they, they are even unmarked. You can't say, okay, this is a, a border uh, post. They just come in with these weapons, sell weapons from, uh, from, uh, from the black market to bandits. The war that broke up in Libya. Nigeria has been badly affected by it because weapons come in from Libya to Chad that has a direct border with them, and then it comes into Nigeria without direct border with, uh, with, uh, with uh, 
uh, uh, Libya. with Libya. And then these weapons are used to kill our people. Mm. Government bought uniforms for mm. the vigilant. At a point, they left them alone. But government then felt, oh, let us encourage these guys who are putting their own lives on the line. Yeah. Our people. They bought weapons for them. Uh, the, this is a pump action, you know. Bought uh, motorcycles for them and even gave them uniforms. So that there is an air of validity to what they are doing. Yeah. What? They have they are no match to these people. I've said it repeatedly. Forty four of them were killed in Kebbi the other day. Oh. Now look at one of the most prominent vigilance group leaders in Zamfara State. Killed in one of the forests of Maru local government. Maru local government is the largest local government in, in uh, Zamfara. Zamfara. Yeah. That is where you have that big Dansa Dao forest. Your home, the headquarters of banditry. Dansa Dao forest. So, they've killed this, they've killed this man, killed some of his lieutenants. It's extremely demoralizing to see people who made up their minds to defend defenseless people yeah. killed in this manner. But, we, we just have to decide. If you want to do community policing, you know, that that uh, the police can work with and all that. And we want to put them in places where we don't have police presence. Mm. You have to protect them. I mean, you have to arm them, at least to be able to stand up to these enemies of the state. You can't keep wasting people like this. It, just, it makes no sense. It, it, it's, as I said, time to call the bluff of these people. And it is not impossible. I get even more enraged when I, I read the story further to say uh, that the bandits uh, made to attack the communities because they were coming after them. Well, that's what happens. Um, unfortunately, like BK said, these people are not armed enough efficiently. When you see the kind of weapons these um, bandits and um, you see the kind of weapons they carry. Mm. You even know that the only service that looks close to it in terms of being armed is the Department of State Services. They are not, they can't match most of them, especially those in the Northeast. And it's the same thing that is coming up in the Northwest now because of the influx of yeah. weapons. Because initially uh, it was through Lake Charge. With our borders, which we understand are porous. Very porous. Ever. Initially, it was through Lake Chad, but it's been blocked now to an extent. So, we are next, the Northwest. So, until we get to that point where those who are protecting communities, in, in the first instance, when Bono State was being liberated and Yobi, yeah. the intention was to put the police and the civil defense in those places. But at the end of the day, what did we get? They were not sufficiently armed enough. As they are taking them, handing them over to the police and the, and the civil defense, these people were coming back because they were better armed. Now the soldiers are back. Well, So uh, we must look at those communities too and yeah. begin to say, what do I we do we, there? We can use modern gadgetry in going after them. It no. is not impossible. We can, but um, in many ways we are stretched. We are stretched in terms of... Um, even the quantum of weapons at our disposal. Because when we're talking about intelligence gathering assets, do we have enough? Do we have enough? The answer is no. These, these guys are occupying huge swaths of our, of our land area yeah. in our country. The other day I was reading that um, the famous Angie Lake National Park, has not been taken over. It's been by taken over. Yeah. Was yeah, it originally true. meant as habitation for bandits? <laughs> you see the forest that we had abandoned for years. Because this was something that happened with with uh, with uh, uh, Sambisa. Sambisa was a forest reserve, left unattended, and now these guys got inside, built fortresses inside. Built a network of tunnels and then fed that, this place, 
is is, 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 is a good place that we can live. <laughs> you know, till today, Boko Haram, Shekau faction, remnants of Shekau faction, they are still there inside, inside Sambisa. It's, it's, it's much safer for them to stay in Sambisa than it is for the ice swap mm. to stay in the islands of Lake Chad. Because the islands of, the, of Lake Chad are a very small area. Nigeria has a very small land border with Chad. So they can All easily right. be exterminated. Right. But the ones in the forest, because Sambisa is uh, 6.5% 6, 6 of the entire Nigerian landmass. Wow. Wow. So you are dealing with and, a place that is so big. That's what it, a chunk. Yeah. Yes, uh, stretching, stretching uh, to at least seven states. Seven states. Okay then, so, uh, we, we'll move on. Uh,